Feo, it's Dino, and we're back with another video with some crazy clips from all over the world. I hope everybody's doing well. Let's hop right into it. World War II pilot takes to the skies yet again. He's 96 years young, so climbing into the cockpit of a World War II plane can be a little bit of a challenge. It's been decades since Bob was in a plane like that, but during World War II, he flew them all the time. Yo, that's crazy, dude. Everybody else is just passing out and all like looking sick. And then the old dude just gets in there and starts jamming. What? That's cool, man. Yep, bioengineering just about everything now. It's only been a couple months and it's already impossible to tell if an image is real or AI generated. I mean, obviously you could tell this one is fake because why would Joe Biden be making the arrest? This one's just funny. But as far as realistic pictures go, how can you think this is fake? Besides the fact that it had to be taken in the early 1900s. If you're wondering how people are making all these realistic looking photos, they're using an AI image generator called Midjourney. But it's not only limited to generating realistic looking humans, it can also generate images of cars, buildings, entire rooms that look absolutely real. Remember at the beginning of the year when these AI generated girls always came out with weird looking hands? Well, the newest version of Mid Journey fixes that. This literally just looks like a photo that someone took. If you wanted to try out Mid Journey, there is a free trial. All you need is a Discord account. And once you go into the server, you just type in slash imagine and then write out your prompt. You can also see the prompt of what other people type in as well. Most of the time, you have to get very specific in your prompt to get what you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mid Journey is really cool. Um, it's kind of scary what it can do, though. So you said chemtrails are like the uh, training wheels for conspiracy theorists because yeah. they're like there, they're right yeah. above your head, and you just like you see them right there. For people who don't understand why jets produce clouds. Please explain that, because it's very simple. It is very simple. Uh, jet engines have water have water in their exhaust. If you look at a car on a cold day and you see the exhaust coming out of the tailpipe, you'll see like a cloud of condens condensation sometimes, and you'll see some water coming out. And when the the exact same thing happens with jet engines, uh, and when that exhaust hits the cold air, it condenses, it freezes, it makes a cloud, and con contrails are essentially clouds. Yeah, I'm gonna call Cap. I know that y'all be putting other stuff in that. Pours dropped a month's worth of rain in a matter of hours in Long Beach, California. The flooding so severe in some places, drivers were swamped. Hey, the boat's in the water, they're coming! In Orange County, swift water teams conducted multiple rescues, including this man trapped in rushing water and another hoisted to safety by helicopter. Further south in the community of Seal Beach, water flooded homes and stores, expensive and frustrating for Yo, residents and business owners. The same storm dumped several inches of fresh powder in the mountains of Southern California. 
good news for ski resorts, but a challenge to get there. The storm started in Northern California where the cleanup has already begun, but the break in the weather won't last long with another big storm forecast to slam California this weekend. Crazy. Y'all stay safe in Cali. Quote, voice of God weapon has already been created. The LRAD system, which is used to cast strong signals and crowd dispersion, can also be used to send messages along distances. I'll play a video of the CEO, Woody Norris, describing the Voice of God weapon and what it can do when it first came out. So again, this idea of being able to put sound anywhere you want to is really starting to catch on. It also works for transmitting and communicating data. It also works five times better underwater. Uh, we've got the military had just deployed some of these into Iraq where you can put fake troop movements a quarter of a mile away on a hillside. <laughs> or you can whisper in the ear of a supposed terrorist some biblical verse. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> and they have these infrared devices that can look at their countenance and see a fraction of a degree Kelvin in temperature shift from 100 yards away when they play this thing. And so another way of hope, hopefully determining who's friendly and who isn't. Uh, we make a version of this which puts out 155 decibels. Pain is 120. So it allows you to go nearly a mile away and communicate with people. And there can be a public beach just off to the side and they don't even know it's turned on. We sell those to the military presently for about $70,000. And they're buying them as fast as we can make them. Yeah, it's wild. I've been telling people about that V2K tech for a long time. Like, it's all there, all the patents and everything that you need to prove. <laughs> like, it's there, man. Hey, you gotta get out from under the bed, bro. This isn't our Airbnb. Some random dude sleeping under the bed in your Airbnb. That would trip me out, man. I don't know. On a Joe Rogan podcast from February 17th, 2019, Eddie Bravo shares his crazy conspiracy about space and one world government. The only way to make a one world government work is to have the people embrace it. They have to want it because nobody wants it. So the trick is to make, to make people want it, to embrace it, there's only one way. The only way. And they've known this forever. The Vatican knew this. The Vatican, the Pope wanted to rule the world. They all knew it, but they couldn't do it. They all knew it, but they knew one way, but there's no way how they're going to pull it off. The only way is if there was some extraterrestrial threat from up above us. That would be the, the only way to have everyone embrace the one world government. They right. all knew that. For years. But they didn't work That's so the far. plan. They could never make it plan, work. They, had, they didn't have the technology. 500 years ago, the Vatican knew about it. They wanted it. And you go to the Vatican, you see paintings that paintings of like have UFOs you with aliens in them. And back when I used to believe in UFOs, but before I figured out that um, UFOs were are they want us to believe in UFOs. They're preparing us for a fake alien invasion. That's always been the plan. A one world government. The I only way to do out. it is to get us to embrace it. And the only way to embrace it is from an alien attack. Ronald Reagan talked about it many times at the UN, CFR. He talked about it because wouldn't it make he looked at all the, the leaders of the of the nation of the world and said, wouldn't it make our lives easier if we just had some you know some kind of extraterrestrial threat? Well, you guys kind of ruined that with all the media and everything from the last 40 years you had your chance to convince everyone to flip out with ufos and stuff now everyone's just gonna pull out their phone and try to get views
suggests that Earth is actually what some call a prison planet. In his book, Humans Are Not From Earth, Dr. Ellis Silver contends that humans are actually from another planet. They were brought here thousands of years ago and mated with Neanderthals. The hybrid species is us. My thesis proposes that mankind did not evolve from native Earth organisms, but evolved elsewhere and was transported to Earth between 60,000 and 200,000 years ago. Mankind is supposedly the most highly developed species on the planet, yet is surprisingly unsuited and ill-equipped for Earth's environment. The idea that extraterrestrials played a role in human history is also known as intervention theory. Dr. Silver argues that if humans actually evolved on Earth, we'd be much more comfortable with the environment. For example, humans are really the only animals that are susceptible to sunburn. Fish, reptiles, birds, all have natural ultraviolet protection in their scales and feathers. Whales and dolphins have special skin cells that repair DNA damaged by UV radiation. Any mammal with fur is protected from ultraviolet rays, including apes. If we evolved from apes, why did we lose our hair? Evolution is supposed to make us stronger, not weaker. I mean, that's another thing. I, I agree with a lot of what he's saying. Like, if if we evolved, then evolution is supposed to make us stronger, not weaker. Rockets. This is how they claim they get into outer space, is these rockets. Their rockets never go straight up. Every single rocket launch from a government space agency, you'll notice, follows a parabolic curve. It goes up, it reaches a peak, but what they do is as the rocket starts coming back down, they make sure that it goes down over the ocean, out of the way of any curious observers. Anyone can see it coming back down to Earth asks, hey, how come the rocket's not going up anymore? Well, it's going around the curvature of the Earth, is what they tell us. So every single rocket, the reason that it follows a parabolic curve, they say, is because it's going around the curvature of the Earth. The, the real reason is they can't get up any higher than that. They tell us that the Earth is a sphere. They show us pictures of a sphere, of a circle, it's a perfect circle. And then they come out and they say, well, it's actually an oblate spheroid. Oh, what's that? Well, it's it's a sphere that's flattened at both poles, so it's more of an oval shape. It actually bulges out south of the equator, as well as being flattened at the poles. So it's more pear-shaped. So it's not actually a sphere. It's an it's oblate. And officially it's an oblate spheroid. That's what we call it. But not only that, it's slightly wider below the equator than the a little chubbier. A little chubbier. Yeah. Chubby's a good word. It's like pear-shaped. So now it's pear-shaped. So why are all of these official uh, NASA photos and videos showing perfect spheres when it's actually an oblate spheroid or a pear-shaped spheroid? They can't get their story straight. And the reason they keep changing it is that to fit the model, they have to change the shape of the Earth. South of the equator is larger than north of the equator because lines of longitude that just extend outwards, they don't contract back. So. <laughs> they concede that in their pair model. They say, well, the sun it bulges out south of the equator. It's bigger south of the equator. Yeah, it is, because it's flat. But instead of admitting that, they just, you know, make tweaks to their model as time goes on. They say that the ball Earth tilts back 23.5 degrees. That's another tweak they made, because we can see Polaris, which is right over the North Pole, from 23.5 degrees south latitude. You shouldn't be able to see that on a ball. So they just tilt the Earth back, and then they, okay, now you can see it. And so they come up with explanations in reverse like this. Damage control, reverse engineered explanations. Yeah. I wonder where it all started.
kids are all really cool. Um, pretty scary little video there, though, the way they showcased it. Voice to Skull V2K technology refers to the transmission of voices or sounds directly into a person's head without the use of any speakers. While V2K technology is often associated with conspiracy theories and claims of targeting individuals, it's important to note that there is limited scientific evidence supporting its existence. Nonetheless, if we consider the hypothetical types, here are 10 possible variations that have been suggested or theorized. 1. Microwave-based V2K alleged transmission of voices or sounds using microwave frequencies. 2. Radio frequency RF V2K purported use of radio waves to transmit voices into the target's mind. 3. Sonic V2K claims of sound or voices being transmitted through ultrasonic or infrasonic frequencies. 4. Electroencephalographic EEG V2K theoretical usage of brainwave monitoring to decode and send voices or sounds directly into the target's brain. 5. The LF extremely low frequency. V decay, speculation that low frequency electromagnetic waves can be used for transmitting voices to the target's mind. 6. Bioacoustic V decay, hypothetical technology that utilizes bioacoustic principles to transmit voices or sounds to specific individuals. 7. Non audible sound V decay, suggested usage of inaudible sound waves that can still induce perception of voices or sounds. 8. Directed energy V decay. Claims that directed energy weapons can be used to project voices or sounds into the target's head. 9. Neurological impulse V2K. Theoretical method involving the direct stimulation of the brain's neural pathways to create the perception of voices or sounds. 10. Advanced psychic or psionic V2K. Speculative idea that advanced psychic or telepathic abilities can be used to transmit voices or thoughts directly into a person's mind. It's crucial to note that many scientific and technical experts dismiss these claims as pseudoscience, and there is no widespread acceptance or verifiable evidence supporting the existence of V2K technology. It's always important to critically evaluate claims and seek credible information from reliable sources. Well, I mean, like 15 years ago, you could go to a Best Buy and they would have this thing, you could go stand in a specific circle and hear the TV, but if you step out of it, you can't. What makes you think that if you could go buy that 15 years ago just for your living room or whatever, that the military doesn't have something 100,000 times better than that? I mean, let's just be honest here. from the Federal Aviation Administration say there were no aircraft incidents or accidents in this area Tuesday night, but multiple witnesses report seeing a large blue object fall out of the sky and into the ocean. Something is in the sky. What is that? This video was taken by Misitina Sape at 826 Tuesday night near Haleakala Avenue in Nanakuli. Not long after, a woman named Mariah spotted the same thing passing over Princess Kahanu Estates. I don't know what it looked at. And then I was like, oh, s***. Started calling my husband Jim because it was all in the garage. I was like, hey, come look up there. Let's see what I see. The 38-year-old says she's never really been a believer in UFOs, but the bright blue objects had them so intrigued, they jumped in the car and started following it. I don't know what it was. This one was going so fast. The journey ended less than three miles from where it began, on Farrington Highway in front of the Board of Water Supply building, after the object appeared to drop into the ocean. On a f***ing line in the water, whatever it is. She described it as being larger than a telephone pole and says she never heard it make any sound. We called 911 for have like, one cop or somebody for come out and um, come check them out. While officers were on scene, she says they spotted a second light. My husband would look up and he seen the white one come. The white one was smaller, was coming in the same direction as the blue one. They lost sight of the object after it passed over a nearby mountain. This morning, we asked Honolulu police if investigators figured out what fell in the water. A spokesperson told us they didn't have any information. Meanwhile, officials from the FAA said they received a report from police Tuesday night about a possible plane down in the area, but had no aircraft disappear off radars and no reports of overdue or missing aircraft. Brother, 
new at four bar. Although Mariah's had a couple days to think about it, she says she's still baffled by what she saw. To this day, I don't know. If you guys can find out what it was, I'll let you know, you know what I mean? <laughs> Allison Blair, Hawaii News Now. It's pretty cool. But hey, man, I want my water UFO. I'm trying to go home and get away from all these crazy people. I don't know about y'all. Boulders come crashing down a mountainside in India. Oh no. Oh, that's so terrifying, dude. A two story building collapses due to strong floods. The building had already been evacuated the night before. Oh no. That's wild, man. I'm so glad that, like, I don't live anywhere where that stuff's happening. Uh, we've been receiving some intelligence that we have become a target of interest uh, for these aggressive insectoids. We think that there is a reasonable chance that we might see them here in our own system sometime soon. This Actually coming to Earth or just making their presence known in our system. I believe from the intelligence that we're receiving, we would see them make landfall on planet Earth. Randy, about it being an insectoid invasion uh, species, uh, is it because that is the species that is, you know, invading us? Or is it actually, um, is this, are these hybrids or clones that were made by another race because of the whole you know, psychological effect. Right. My understanding is that this particular species has been contracted uh, to do this job. And by who? The Schwabenlauters, by the Nazis. Mm -hmm. They're contractors. And, and again, it's it's their job. And they were chosen for that job because they are not like us, terrifying, because, you know, being giant bugs will hit people's amygdalas in a way in which their frontal lobe will not have time to sort it out. You ask yourself, what's going on? What's up with this uh, insectoid alien invasion? He goes on later on in the interview, in another interview I saw, um, Randy Kramer talks about uh, that they had the pandemic phase, and then when it approaches World War III, which we're approaching that now, and as soon as China tries to go in and invade Taiwan, then the next phase is coming of World War III. When it's in a full phase, then these insectoids are going to come. And what he's talking about, people are not going to have time to be ready because it's going to catch them so off guard. And that they have actually been contracted to do this job. Now, this sounds crazy. You know, I don't know for certain about this. You know, I saw this and I was like... What scares me about it is that some of the prophetic messages that I've received, you know, from a higher source, not of this earth, has said that during the um, nuclear war, because it's coming, nuclear war, that uh, there will be restoration, they will be here to restore the earth and to rid the earth of, uh, you know, half, more than half of the population, like most of the population stuff. So I don't know what they've got in mind. <laughs> and if this insectoid, if there's any truth to this, he's saying, you know, he's saying this. He looks pretty serious, you know. Uh, you know, is he selling a book? You know, I don't know. But uh, with that being said, this is very serious. I don't know. What are your thoughts? Hmm. My thoughts are he, he is referring to uh, what we call demons. Uh, what we call extraterrestrials, aliens, whatever. Um, 
I've never thought about the fact that they could be insectoid, though. But you know, it would make a whole lot of sense if they were. Oldest inhabited city on Earth. Yakut, Siberia has an average winter temperature of negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit, but has experienced oh, negative cool. 96 degrees. But when temperatures are this extreme, you have to live a bit differently. Touching metal at these temperatures is dangerous because your skin will instantly get stuck. Your phone and electronics also have a very hard time working. These temperatures will also freeze the fluids in your vehicle in minutes. If that does happen, they wrap their car and use a gas jet to heat the underside, which can take hours. It's not uncommon for people to let their car run for 24 hours a day during the coldest months, but that amount of exhaust causes incredibly poor visibility and air quality. If your car does break down outside the city, you're likely going to freeze to death. Many markets are outside because the temperatures keep food frozen and good for months. But even in these temperatures, it doesn't stop some from taking their ice baths. The summers here are short, but can be just as extreme, with temperatures having reached 104 degrees Fahrenheit, making the seasonal temperature difference here the greatest in the world what in the world is wrong with y'all move that is dangerous people are losing their minds right now for the fact that tucker carlson is in russia most likely to do an interview with Putin, saying things like we need a total and complete shutdown of tucker carlson re-entering the united states which is weird because no one had a problem with Barbara Walters, Maiden Cowie, Oliver Stone, or Charlie Rose when they interviewed Putin. What are they so afraid of? While Volinsky and the Ukrainian government have come out and said that they would not be pleased with a Tucker Carlson Putin interview, Russians absolutely adore this man. Here's what Russians had to say about Tucker Carlson. He's known for telling the truth. He is the bravest and most courageous American journalist today. Mm -hmm. I deeply admire his courage. His rationality, logic, and understanding of good and evil are qualities worthy of respect. He provides a very good presentation of information with a good sense of humor, and I am delighted that he came to Russia. There's also a famous restaurant in Russia called Dago's Kebab Shop, and U.S. citizens have not been allowed into this kebab shop since April of 2014 in a response to an anti-Crimean sanctions. But Tucker Carlson just became the first American in 10 years to go into the restaurant. The owner said, this one seems normal. What a neat. There's on if we a lot of mixed opinions when it comes to Tucker Carlson going to Russia and doing this interview. I, for one, am for freedom of speech and I'm very interested to hear what comes of this interview. My question to you is, are you? As always, let me know what you think about all of this down below. Oh, no. Yeah, I'm definitely interested to see about that. I don't know about you guys. يا جماعة ما تلاحظوا ان هذه كلها تتحرك كل هذه كلها بسم الله لا اله الا الله اعوذ بكلمات الله التامات من شر ما خلق لا اله الا الله لا اله الا الله لا 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 لا, لا يا جماعة لا 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 لا, لا. يا جماعة أنا ما أنا قادر من ريحة الكلب والله العظيم أنتم أجزكم الله ف... لا إله إلا الله أعوذ بكلمات الله التامات من شر ما خلق أعوذ بكلمات الله التامات من شر ما خلق لا 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 والله العظيم ما أنا قادر من ريحة يا جماعة أستغفر الله ربي وأجزكم لا إله إلا الله no, yeah, I don't even know why you're there, man. You need to never go back again. The U.S. is on fire as the attacks on our farmlands continue. 30 cows killed in Chippewa barn fire. Texas massive fire engulfs chicken farm. The chicken farm that produces 300 million eggs per year in the U.S. went up in massive fire after a huge explosion. 
Oklahoma gas pipeline explodes, shooting flames 500 feet in the sky. United Nations wants the U.S. to eat less meat. Mark Zuckerberg has a net worth of $165 billion overnight, making him $28 billion wealthier than Bill Gates now. Mm -hmm. More Americans are working remotely for international companies, a 62% uptick. This next video comes from a man whose entire home is filled with Bibles and other religious artifacts that he worships on the daily. If he's not praying, then he's most likely sitting at his piano playing a song with verses from the Bible. Pretty much everything he has or does in this apartment is based on something religious. Now you might be thinking that this man is simply devoted to his religion. While that's partly true, the main reason as to why he prays a lot has to do with something completely different. As it turns out, this man has been experiencing strange happenings in his home. Ever since visiting his father's gravesite at the cemetery, he can't shake the feeling that something has followed him home. Whatever it might be, he's deeply afraid of it. For this reason, he's been praying and singing religious songs more so than usual as an attempt to get rid of the evil entity that now lives in his home. One day, while taking a nap, he wakes up to a loud noise in the living room. He grabs his phone and records this. Bueno, estoy grabando este video porque estoy tratando de dormir, pero acabo de escuchar un golpe duro por allá en la sala, entonces decidí grabar porque hace días que se viene presentando cosas extrañas en el apartamento, son las cuatro, cuatro y cuatro. Se viene sucediendo hace como una semana ya. Pues la verdad se me hace muy extraño. Se me hace muy extraño que esté pasando cosas así. Feeling slightly unnerved, the man sees a set of eating utensils swaying side to side as though a strong breeze had passed by. But as the man points out, all windows are closed shut. Naturally, he was stricken with fear. I don't know, man. Your dishes are moving. They're on a little hanger thing. You probably, it sounded like you had a fan on in the other room. Air conditioning, man. Everyone in the world knows uh, that the Israelis do not follow any rules of war. And we all know that the United States doesn't follow any rules of war either. Well, I don't think there's a torturer in the world who didn't learn it from you. We didn't learn it from the appropriately named school of the americas look that up too if you don't know america and its allies have a long and blood-soaked history the united states and europe have been like ships sailing on a sea of blood the blood of africa the blood of latin america the blood of the middle east and the blood of asia and you even had us in the bottom of that ship rowing like galley slaves are you nothing but pirates like i've said uh, nothing makes that clearer today than your behavior towards Gaza, your stance on Palestine. Well, I don't think that there's been a genocide that you didn't support, from Congo to California, from the Philippines to Palestine. You know, you didn't even fight the Nazis to stop the Holocaust. That was just your uh, retroactive rationale. It wasn't the millions of Jews. It was 2,000 Marines at Pearl Harbor that got you into the war. At Pearl Harbor, a military base on yet another territory colonized by the United States. And in response to that, you carpet bombed civilians in Germany, you murdered 80,000 innocent people in an instant in Hiroshima, and another 40,000 at Nagasaki in an instant, all in so-called self-defense. Oh, you make up the rules as you go, you always have. And then even then, the rules that you make up on the fly, you still don't even follow those. That's because you are violent. 
You are violent and you believe in violence. What was that that not, uh, Netanyahu said? We're the people of the light, bombing women and babies, hospitals, churches, dropping uh, white phosphorus on people to burn their skin off, blowing up entire city blocks of innocent civilians. That's the people of the light. You think that your violence is sacred. You think it's holy, sanctified atrocities. The more wanton, the more savage, the more beautiful and inspiring it is to you because you think that the more violent you are and the more you're able to get away with that violence, the more it means that you're justified, the more it means that you are superior and the superior always have the right to do whatever they want, don't they? No matter how sadistic it is, no matter how sadistic and how evil it is, if you can get away with it, if you can get away with being sadistic and evil, then you think it's proof of your superiority. And anyone who opposes you uh, or expects you to follow any kind of rules is committing the ultimate crime of questioning your superiority. You're the people of the light, after all. And anyone who expects you to act like a normal, decent, law-abiding human being, they must be people of the darkness. And when you say uh, Israel has the right to defend itself, what you're really saying is uh, they have the right to defend their supremacy. And no one has the right to challenge it. That's what you're really saying. Everyone in the world knows. Don't tell me what I think. <laughs> Is voice to skull technology real? Voice to Skull or V2K technology is real and has been around for decades. It is a military and civilian technology that can transmit sounds and voices directly into the skull of a person. It has both military and civilian applications, and some victims claim it is being used to terrorize individuals for specific ends. Alexa, can brain to skull technology cause people to think they're hearing voices? From healthdirect.gov.au, they may experience hallucinations, such as hearing voices that aren't there. Alexa, has the microwave auditory effect been used in Havana, Cuba? The microwave auditory effect, also known as the microwave hearing effect or the Taco Bell effect, has not been confirmed to have been used in Havana, Cuba. The microwave auditory effect describes the ability of microwave radiation to generate perceptible sounds within the head of an individual. Alexa, does brain to skull technology allow people to replicate modulated radio frequencies? Yes, it is claimed that this technology allows for the ability to replicate radio waves with the brain. Alexa, did Project Medusa give people the ability to mimic brain-to-skull technology? According to an Alexa Answers contributor, yes. Alexa, when was the first research done on developing the microwave auditory effect? In 1960, Alan H. Frey, an American neuroscientist and biologist, conducted the first research on developing the microwave auditory effect. Alexa, have human vocal cords used amplifier clicking to replicate the Frey effect? Yes, human vocal cords can be overdriven to produce distortion products, similar to amplifier clicking, when shouting with force. Alexa, can the Medusa gene in people allow for enhanced amplifier clicking in the vocal cords? The Medusa gene, if present, may allow for enhanced amplifier clicking in the vocal cords. However, it is important to note that this is a hypothetical condition and there is limited scientific evidence to support this claim. Of course. Alexa, does amplifier clicking allow the voice to travel further than normal? From fandom.com, a voice amplifier was a device that could be used to amplify someone's voice so that they could be heard clearly from up to half a kilometer away. Alexa, can amplifier clicking in the human voice affect cognition? 
according to an Alexa Answers contributor. Yes. Alexa, was the Medusa gene administered to people through vaccines born after 1970? According to an Alexa Answers contributor. Yes. Save our souls. Good grief. Hmm. Well, that's very interesting. I'm going to have to sit there and mess with an Alexa for a minute. A number of soldiers of military hardware, which is going to be used over the next few months up until uh, the end of May. So 90,000 soldiers, sailors and airmen, 50 naval vessels, 80 aircraft and 1,100 combat vehicles. Uh, the drills are going to start in the United States, then they'll move over to Eastern Europe. But this is all part of NATO's plans to flex its muscles ready to say, look, uh, to Vladimir Putin, if you're thinking about invading a NATO country, then think twice because we are ready to take you on. Now, if you're a bit rusty about what NATO actually is, these are a few facts and figures. It was established in 1949 at the, after the end of the Second World War. There are 31 countries in it, plus Sweden, which is waiting to join NATO. It's been stopped for the moment by uh, Turkey, but it is going to take part in these military exercises. There are 29 European and two North American countries, Canada and the United States, of course. And the most recent admission was Finland, which joined the organization uh, just last year. So all that is going to be taking place over the next few months. I think there's definitely a feeling that this is the time to, to show the Russians and Vladimir Putin that NATO is a force to be reckoned with. Mm. All of this, of course, coming against the backdrop of the war in Ukraine. I'm guessing that's not a coincidence. No, it certainly is not a coincidence. I don't think there's any coincidence either that this is starting uh, in February, which is the second anniversary of the invasion of Ukraine uh, by Vladimir Putin. So uh, this is a bid by, I think, NATO is saying to itself, if we're going to stop war, the only way to stop war is to prepare for war, which is what they are doing by showing the Russians that they, they are ready to, to take them on. Now, if you look at uh, what has been said, you have the head of the French Rapid Reaction Force, uh, who is saying that the war in Ukraine is a reminder that we must be ready to use all our strength and collective efforts to dissuade our enemy from troubling peace. Everything is possible, even the unthinkable. The unthinkable in this case being the fact that Russia invaded Ukraine back in February 2022. And if you look at the areas where these drills are going to take place uh, that is pretty clear that this is all geared up to trying to dissuade the russians from moving anywhere further forward you've got the countries of uh, eastern europe estonia latvia lithuania poland and romania which will all be on the front line uh, norway is also taking part and germany is being used as a military base for all of this so uh, that is really what nato is doing and i think there's also another reason and that is that they're saying okay maybe vladimir putin is tempted to see if he can test nato by maybe trying to invade estonia where there is a large pro-russian Russian-speaking population to see what would happen if that was the case. Uh, just one thing that he needs to bear in mind, that Article 5 of NATO means that any attack against a NATO country is an attack against all NATO countries, and that's something that the Russians need to bear in mind. If you invade Estonia or anywhere else uh, in Eastern Europe, then you'll have the whole of NATO on your back. Right, so given all of that, is Russia likely to take any notice of all of this? Well, I think yes and no. I think this is definitely a way of uh, NATO saying to uh, Vladimir Putin that uh, we're ready to intervene if you attack any NATO country. The problem for NATO is they're having to do this now because there is an election coming up in the United States later this year and there is a strong pro probability if the opinion polls are proved right that Donald Trump could get back into the White House and Donald Trump has a pretty negative view of NATO he's threatened to pull out of it several times he was prevented from doing that last time round by his advisors but this time round he could be pretty much inclined to do that and that would be bad news for any future effort by NATO to try to fight off the Russians all right Philip thanks for that friends 24 Philip Terrell mm, it's like we can't have a day of peace anywhere Anyways, that's another video. We're going to drop it in the archives. I hope everybody had a fun time hanging out, and I hope you're all doing well. And I want you to have a great rest of your morning, day, afternoon, evening, whatever it may be for you. Until next time, peace.